Учите как са с първо, второ, трето, четвърто, някъде петото облъче. Там. Между четвъртото и петото облъче ще излезе. То сега там ще стане... Виж, то там е по-червено. Ще пързо ще стане червено. Между касала и тази. Чакай малко. И там е зато лодки. Малко пъсна. Не пъсна. За плотките не мислиш, че ще излезе? Е, и там е това облъче, дето е по-скоро. По-скоро е тук, между тия два, това облъка големи. Ще го видиш. Добре, добре, добре. Плотките. Но ви трябват доста умения и на колеси. Трябва ви и доста място на всички посоки. Препоръчвам да ви се прощайте от мат. По-късно почна да изгрявам при мъжа. Мага и колко късно. Ви 
их не оставить нарушенных Добре, остави го от сега да снима. Е, записва ли? Да. Признаците също са готови. Време е да покажат на вратите кой е шеф. Те нямате толкова време. Искате просто да вкарате колкото се може повече. 
че вашите копки ще ви дадем на соки за успех, които ще ви подобрят шансовете ви в играта. Запознайте се с трикратния европейски шампион по билярд Рико Дикс. Да, много е добър. Всъщност, честно казано, е аз ги върх. Рико ще пробва два начина за така. Един човек, една щека, една маса. Разликата ще е в техника. Първо му избира топките. Ето целта му е големата топка е отпред. Да видим какво ще стане. Целенето в първата топка е инстинктивен метод. Дали това обаче ще доведе до точки? От пекал се трябва да е най-много 8 съвкари. Сега Рико отново подръжда топките. Ще разбиха 15 пъти, като целта му е на втория ред. Виждате ли? Да, обаче не съм го кадрирал правилно и ми дойде малко в кривото. Видях ли сега къде е изгряно, бе ли? Да. Утре ще мръдни съвсем малко на тата. Сега ми е и в този край, то трябва да е в центъра. Thank you. 
fabulous spoon-like shape, but it's also got lots of sensation in it. It's not just a, an inert object at the front of the bird. This is part of its system of finding prey. And it moves it through the water, and as soon as it touches against something, it can detect that, it'll immediately snap at it. And in this particular case, what it's found is a very unfortunate frog that's found itself right in the grip of one of the most formidable bills on any bird in the world. Once that frog is in that bill, there's really no escape. There's two things that this bird is trying to do. The first one is to subdue it. So it's giving it basically a good thrashing between its bill. It's trying to subdue it because it doesn't want to take a live animal down its throat. It wants to make sure that that animal isn't moving because it's going to cause it any damage at all. So the second thing that it's trying to do is to orient that frog in the right way to get down its throat without causing any harm. And you can see after a while it manages to flip it around in such a way that it's very neatly arranged, head first, right down the throat. And as soon as that happens, up goes the bill, down goes the frog, and the spoon bill moves on to its next prey, which could be another frog, might be a fish, could be a newt, some amphibian, a big insect. These are good generalist feeders, and whatever it finds in the shallows, it's going to take. So if you're ever looking for frogs, take a tip from this spoon bill. They're often active and feeding in the early hours of the morning and towards the evening, which is a great time for humans to find frogs if you're a biologist out looking for them, and a brilliant time for these spoon bills to go out. Sure, and he was willing to take on some pretty tough challenges to make money. On February 5th, 1898, the Clara Nevada departs from Skagway under Captain Lewis's command. Bound for Seattle, it is packed with prospectors returning home with a fortune in Klondike gold. The amount of gold that came on board was worth $165,000. In today's terms, that would be $13 million. But little do any of the over 200 people on board know. Their luck is about to take a drastic turn. Just a few hours... ...to be able to know you in Latvia. And was that a... ...where you would seem to logically predict tens of thousands of civilizations out there that you ought to be able to hear on radio track. But if there is such a high probability of the existence of other intelligent life forms in the universe, why haven't we encountered them? If there are so many other planets out there, and if the chance for intelligent life out there is high, why has anyone visited us? The human race should be typical of what intelligent life is like in the rest of the cosmos. Plus, the cosmos is much older than the human race. We tend to expand into all possible living spaces. Intelligent life in the rest of the universe should probably act like that too. People like us should be filling the cosmos. <coughs> Everywhere we point a radio telescope, we should be picking up noise. Instead, there's nothing. What radio telescopes have yet to pick up a transmission from other intelligent beings in the universe? That would be a uh, The question, where are they, should be answered with, look at the ancient astronaut theory. Because we are suggesting that there is evidence that goes back thousands of years by the stories that we have of gods, lowercase g, descending from the sky. It doesn't matter on what continent. Every single continent was visited. I would say that the evidence is there, and it's all around us, whether it's in megalithic signs that are aligned to constellations, such as the Great Serpent Mound in Ohio, even the, the pyramids of Giza. And even stories about beings coming down in spaceships, interacting with people. Evidence is overwhelmed that there are extraterrestrials all over the universe, and they're coming in. According to ancient astronaut theorists, one of the earliest and most compelling pieces of evidence to support the notion that extraterrestrials have visited Earth can be found with an ancient Sumerian cylindrical seal 
known as the AD243. Author Zechariah Sitchin was the first to suggest that on this seal, which is estimated to be at least 4,500 years old, is a depiction of our solar system. You can see in the seal that there's the whole complete model of the solar system accurately being displayed with the sun in the center. Now, till the time of Copernicus and Galileo, no one knew that we actually orbited the sun. So the only explanation is someone who had this knowledge gave it to humanity, and that there has been extraterrestrial presence and interaction with people in the past. And we see this across the globe. Many ancient cultures tell stories of gods descended from specific star systems. The Maya associated their gods with the Pleiades star cluster, as did the Native Americans hundreds of miles away. The Dogon tribe and the ancient Egyptians believed their gods came from the star Sirius. In old Egypt, you may have, for example, Osiris who came from Orion. Osiris was married to Isis. Isis came from the star of Sirius. These extraterrestrials, the so-called gods, and they pointed up to the sky and said, look, this is our home. But what if other intelligent beings had inhabited other planets within our solar system, as ancient astronaut theorists contain? Perhaps they once sought out Earth, as we now seek other habitable worlds. Coming up, Mars was once much more Earth-like, and perhaps we can bring it back, make it more Earth-like today. This may be really evidence that Earth was seeking. Temperature really high enough 
and gets things going in plant life and oxygen. So one question, where do you get that gentle atmosphere? Cup of oxygen, there is various amounts of gases trapped in the polar caps. So you can imagine melting those and releasing the gas. Terraforming another planet is a very, very long-term prospect. Now, if we were going to terraform Mars to make it more Earth-like, we can think of ways of doing that. We can see the big microbes that might produce a thicker atmosphere. You can dramatically modify conditions on a planet by suitable intervention. And Mars would seem to be a good one to do it for. Mars was once much more Earth-like. Perhaps we could bring it back and make it more Earth-like again. Earth's early atmosphere and Mars present atmosphere in composition are very similar. Earth had a lot of water vapor, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. That's what Mars atmosphere consists of. At International Affairs, it's proposed that if humans are planning to one day give Mars a breathable atmosphere. Extraterrestrials may have done the same thing with Earth millions of years ago. There's a distinct possibility that the Earth could have been terraformed. When you look at the development of Earth, what you see is that at every stage, the planet got exactly what it seemed to need to develop into this beautiful blue world that we live on. When we needed oxygen, there was bacteria introduced in the ecosystem that actually sucked up carbon dioxide and methane gas and pumped out oxygen. We're looking at what Mars is, and we're taking trying to build an atmosphere and everything else. And the first question you have to ask yourself is, get to go to the terrestrials come here and do the same thing. But how did planet Earth, when it was once devoid of oxygen, turn into the lush green one of today? Scientists have struggled for years to discover just how it became habitable. There's always been a problem about life on Earth. Did it actually start here? Earth will come here from somewhere else. There's no known transition from non-life to life that we can all agree on. As soon as we don't know how life began, it's up the ground. But we know Earth is likely to live the oxygen atmosphere. Earth is the most scientists agree that our oxygenated atmosphere most likely can be attributed to the presence of microbes. Many things exist as to exactly where these organisms came from. One intriguing speculation that has caught the attention of ancient astronaut theorists involves grooved metal walls called Kirkstorp spheres. These were objects were found scattered in mineral deposits in South Africa and date back from billions of years. There are people that argue that these spheres are natural, but there's really no natural objects that bear any resemblance to them at all. And the fact that they're buried in rock that is so old indicates that somebody sort of scattered them throughout the planet. They appear to be metallic, constructed spheres in which you couldn't place bacterial life that would definitely have been able to then spill out of the ecosystem, multiply, divide, and change the environment, exactly as we're proposing to do on the planet Mars. We might say that this is just a natural occurring thing on Earth, but this may be evidence that Earth was seeded by some kind of bacteria or microbes brought here. And what we have today is purposely created by beings with tremendous powers and all.
и че не е по сялото, като сяваме. Това е ясно. Казвам, че ние сме съвсем различни и генетични и това от всички други създания на земята. Thank you. 